Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for the continuous support, suggestions, and phone calls. Today we're at Hope Zoo in the middle of St. Andrew. You guys should definitely come have a family fun day out here. So today we're talking about career choices in agriculture, and we met up with a young lady, Miss Richards, who's doing her internship from the College of Agriculture, Science, and Education. And we just wanted to kind of dive into some career choices that young individuals have entering the field of agriculture. So I do hope this helps a lot of the young farmers out there, a lot of students out there who want to venture in agriculture. Hi, my name is Juanin Richards. I am a K student. I have a pending degree in Associate of Veterinary Science. I'm currently doing internship at the Hope Zoo. Uh, it's an eight week program and I should be finished. This is actually my very last week. Uh, it has been great working here so far. Um, quite a few case students work here as well. So we are big on trying to get as many college students in for the experience. But it has been genuinely great so far. All right. So what I've learned here is that seeing that the zoo is so big we always have to have a system put in place and we have to follow that system otherwise our day-to-day -day activities will be thrown off so for example um i'm currently in the petting zoo with the goats and sheep and normally the system is to clean up just do a little light raking in the mornings just to get all the debris out of the way um then we would do feeding uh so we'd give them a variety of foods, so like hay and the pellets, um, carrots, different things just to keep on top of their nutrition. Uh, they normally also snack on the trees, the leaves that fall from this tree right here. But in general, I would say um, having a system always works. So cleaning, feeding, and then, you know, you have evening feed as well because they get fed twice a day. Um, other animals, same, same thing, typically. You would normally have um, washing. You'd find, normally find us doing washing and cleaning off the, the, the plates and stuff in the mornings to make sure that the foods are going down on fresh plates, changing their water, um, and... As you can see here, they really do like cuddles, so they would normally rub up on us and stuff like that. Um, a variety of animals are here, so you have monkeys, squirrel monkeys here, reptiles. I would normally um, be assigned to the reptile route, so I would go to the iguana hatchlings in the mornings, wash up their little dishes and change their water, and then I would do um the crocodiles as well the snakes quite a few animals here um lots of bird species so for example like the macaws and stuff like that um scarlet macaws blue and gold macaws and we have um wild peacocks around the place as well so they're just free to roam those are normally free range but i have learned quite a few things that i will continue after this point so earlier i heard you talk about reptiles yes um, i know a lot of females are afraid of a lizard yes how is it that you cope with working with crocodiles iguanas <laughs> oh, how, how, how you manage that? all right to be honest um when i was younger i was also always afraid of reptiles um you couldn't get me touch a phone screen with the video of a snake ever and since I came here once for veterinary externship and like we had a little field trip here and they brought the snakes out and I was like okay it's time to overcome my fear now I'm going to be a veterinarian one day I can't continue to do this anymore so um to be honest the first touch of the snake I would say that is what kind of got me over the fear of snakes and then I started like holding them it's just always important not to squeeze them because they will react but for the snakes it was a piece of cake honestly just touching them 
and then after a while you get used to the fact that they're not going to bite unless you do something very sudden um for like the iguanas now it's just how you hold them uh so you'd hold the head at the the base of the skull hold the head and hold near the tail so that's how you would hold them so that they don't bite um crocodiles i haven't touched them i touched a baby one the other day like when they had the easter in um the easter adventure on sunday i had to hold a baby crocodile his mouth was duct taped but i had to hold him by the head and by the tail and it was fun it was fun as long as you understand that you have to hold them a certain way and you can't make any sudden movements you'll be totally fine i haven't been bit so that's great that's a thumbs up <laughs> all right so behind me we have some kangaroos here um we have rue and there's another female here not remembering her name right now but you guys should really come and enjoy seeing them here why i decided to become a vet i have always been um into animals since i was well since i since i knew myself um i grew up in springville where um they would normally have i normally had a dog and she had a few puppies and from that time until now i have always gravitated to dogs so th those were my first um animal love so to speak dogs and then i went further into getting hamsters later on in life and i realized that i genuinely love animals because things like horse racing those things really get me upset the fact that they have to beat the horses but i think um just having an unconditional love for animals that is what um that's my motivation to become a vet because you know that vets are doctors that are specifically assigned to animals and you know it's much different from humans because when a human can tell you that hey my head hurts and these are the symptoms that i have for an for animal doctors it is way different because you just have to look at signs and you have to really observe the animal you can't go based on what they say because obviously they cannot talk so i would say just loving them um that is my passion and that is what is driving me to continue to pursue veterinary science and become a vet right, so my question to you now is so you do your associates um as a veterinary what's a degree name so associates in, in veterinary, veterinary science. science how is it that now what's the next step for you all right so the next step for me i have been looking into a number of vet schools abroad um the thing with case they don't necessarily do the bachelors in veterinary science so you'd have to matriculate into something like animal science so what i am planning to do is to go overseas after i'm finished getting my degree here and go ahead get a, get exemptions from a few courses and then just go right into starting my dvm and all of that and uh, that's another five to seven years that i'm looking at so i'm trying to get as many scholarships and experience as i can before i go ahead and go into that so that's the next step all right so my journey so far into agriculture um i did the sciences so i did biology i did agriculture and of course math english the core subjects um what you would look for to be honest you would come across a lot of um experiences that would take you out of your comfort zone so for example um it's it's a typical thing for males to be engrossed in agriculture um not a lot of females but upcoming females now i would advise you to be brave and be yourself um so whenever people tell you no you cannot do this and you cannot do that i have been doing it um in my spare time at home 
I am studying veterinary science, but I also do a little farming. So I would plant like corn and tomatoes, callaloo. Those are stuff that I do on the side as well. So don't necessarily limit yourselves to only animals. Remember, agriculture is a mixture of animals and plants. So whenever you can make the two work, go ahead and do it. And for case, that is where I went. And uh, it has been... Uh, a bittersweet experience for me. I am finally finishing up my degree. I'm in my last leg, just doing internship now. And once I'm finished and I get to graduate, I'm going to be so happy. So for students going to case, just to go with an open mind, um, go prepared to do a lot of work because as you guys already know, work is everywhere in no matter the field of study that you choose. So go prepare to work. Um, it's a lot of hands-on um, experiences that you're going to be going into. So make sure, say, you know, you're strong, you're sturdy, your immune system up and get ready to do some work. Whether it's planting or animals, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, big up case, big up case.